Hello, welcome to my channel. This video is an introduction lesson for the app Ibis Paint, my most favorite drawing app on the mobile platform. It has a great official channel featuring hundreds of video to explain every function of the app, I highly recommend checking it out. But if you are new to digital drawing, you are probably confused and don't know which video to start with, so I make this video to show you the most basic, yet most important tools you must understand. You will be able to do a digital drawing from start to finish after learning everything this video shows. Let's begin. This is how Ibis Paint looks like when you boot it up. To create a new drawing, go to Gallery and tap the plus sign on the left corner. It has some preset canvas size, you can also manually enter the width and length of the canvas. On the top you can also import picture directly from your photo gallery. This is the option you will use if you have a drawing on paper, scan it with your phone camera and import it here. After you created a canvas, you will see the main interface of the drawing section. It has a clean UI and lots of drawing space in the center. You can use two finger to zoom in and out, pan around and rotate the canvas. On the upper left corner you also have undo and redo button, very basic stuff. On the bottom you have a toolbar with different icons. Let's check the pen icon first, upon tapping it opens a bigger list of tools, the tool names are very self-explanatory. Out of all these tools, transform, lasso, brush, eraser, bucket, eyedropper are the ones that I use frequently. I will explain what each one does for you. Before that, let's check the setting and you can set options for gesture and pressure sensitivity. The gestures are also self-explanatory, I find myself me stapping a lot so I usually have them all turn off. The pressure sensitivity setting is available only if you have a pressure enabled stylus phone, such as Samsung Note and Samsung Tab series. Newer iPhone with 3D touch function will also have sensitivity setting as well. If your phone does not have it, it is okay because it is not a must for good drawing. Let's move back to the tools, brush and eraser is self explanatory so I am not going into that. Eyedropper allows you to pick a color on the canvas. For example, you finish coloring the hair with brown color and move on to the skin, but much later finds a spot of hair without color. Instead of trying to match the hair color, you can use the eyedropper to pick the brown color from the hair and color it up. The bucket tool allows you to fill in large empty areas with color that you choose. Please remember that it will only fill the area if you have lines around that, if there is no line or large opening, it will fill the whole canvas up. If you import a photo line art from your photo gallery, you will need to extract the lines first, otherwise the bucket tool won't work well. I recommend using it only if you draw your line art directly from the app, not on paper. There is also gap recognition that you can turn on and you can set how large a hole it will fill, but personally I always close my lines so I never turn it on. You can also further customize it with the gear icon on the right, personally I set the reference layer to canvas and just leave the rest on default most of the time. The expansion specifies how much pixels the color will blend into the line art. For example, if you set it zero you will find a lot of pixels near the lines that is not filled up. If you set it too high it will bleed through the lines. So you will need to adjust it based on the thickness of your line art. I usually have it at 1.5 or so. The lasso tool allows you to select a specific part of the canvas. You will also have a few more settings on the lower right corner. The first one lets you refresh each selection. The second lets you add to a new selection. And the third one subtract a selection out. Next one is go straight into the transform tool with the selection you have, we will talk about it on the next section. To the right you also have invert selection, this means to select everything else beside the original selection. The last one is simply remove the selection on the canvas. The lasso tool is helpful and I often use it to adjust my sketch. For example, if I find the eyes on my sketch off place, I will use the lasso tool to select the eyes only, go to transform tool and move it to the correct location. 
Please remember that after you are done with the tool, you always want to remove the selection before exiting the lasso tool. The last tool that I wanted to go over is the transformation tool. You can access it after making a selection. If you pick it directly from the tool menu, it will select your whole layer by default. The first one is transform scale, and it is the setting I use most frequently. You can move the selection or layer around with one finger. And if you enable the magnifying glass and rotation icon, you can also resize and rotate it with two fingers. There are also the perspective and mesh transform, but it is not commonly used so I don't recommend beginner to get into it. With the tools finish, let's move on to other icons on the bottom toolbar. On the very left corner you have a brush and eraser switch. No matter what tool you are on right now, by tapping this icon it will also switch back to the brush, tap it again to switch to eraser. The third icon is the brush setting. There are tons of great brushes to work from but some are unlocked. If you are using free version, you can unlock all brushes by watching a 30 seconds ad to use for 24 hours. Or you can subscribe to a monthly plan. You can also customize each brush furthermore such as fade, shape and jitter. However the default settings most good enough most of the time, and I don't recommend beginner to touch it unless you know what you are doing. The next icon in the middle is the color palette, you select the hue from the outer ring and shades from the inner square. Very straightforward. Next to it there is an arrow pointing up or down, it simply enables the brush size and opacity quick setting. This is helpful if you find yourself changing brush size a lot. Near the right side is the layer panel. By default there is a selection layer in pink that you can never delete. You will always need to have at least one normal layer available as well. To add a new layer or duplicate an existing layer, tap the plus or the square plus sign on the left. If you are very new and do not know how layer works, just imagine each layer as transparent paper stack up together. It is not hard to understand and if you still have trouble, check out other videos explaining layers. Right below the add layer icon, you can flip the whole canvas horizontally or vertically. This is great when you need to flip the drawing for a quick check to see if the face drawing is messed up or not. On the right side you can clear the current layer. Invert the color. And transform it just like the regular transform tool. You can also flip the layer vertically or horizontally. Please note that this icon only flips the current layer, not the whole canvas like the ones on the left do. Below that you have the merge down icon. It combines the current layer to the one below. I use it often to keep the layer window from clutter. The last trash icon is to delete the currently layer. Below the trash icon there is more option with three dots, mainly to rename your layer. There is more to the layer window, the eye in the middle hides everything on the layer. This does not delete or erase of the layer. It only temporary disable it. The three lines on the right lets you hold and draw the layer order. If you add a layer and it goes on top of the line art layer, you can hold and pull it back below the line art. At the bottom you have the opacity slider, pull it to 0% will make the layer totally transparent. Above that you have the clipping, alpha lock, and layer mode. I personally use multiplier for darken, and add mode for lighten. And I recommend beginner to try this two modes first too to avoid confusion. I will explain more about it in my future video. Alpha lock is a great function that lets you draw on the layer with base color, and the color won't go out of place. Clipping is basically the same as alpha lock, but you do it in a new layer so you have even more control over it. It clips on the layer below only.
The very last icon lets you save and exit your drawing. Your drawing will be also automatically save over time as well. Two last thing that I wanted to go over is the icon at the upper right. First one is the selection modifier. After you draw a selection, you can cut or copy, paste it from here. If you did not draw a selection, it simply applies to the whole current layer instead. Next one is the hand stabilizer, which is the greatest helper from this app. If you do not turn on stabilizer, your hand may shake during line section and create some jaggy lines. By turning it one alleviates some of the shakiness. You can also turn on force fade to create fake pressure sensitivity lines. Setting method to after will smooth your lines even more after it is drawn. For my next video I will show you how you can utilize this tool to create a fine line art. So this is all for the explanation of Ibis Paint. There are still lots of functions I haven't covered, these are only the very basic, but enough to create a finished drawing with it. For my next video I will teach you how to color your paper drawing into a clean and professional looking drawing even if you are a first time digital artist. So test out all the tools I mentioned, and stay tuned for my next tutorial.